Welcome back everybody and today we're going to begin in chapter 3 which involves individual characteristics. Now your slide begins with people in organizations and what does it mean by people in organizations? Well we need to understand the concept of person job fit first of all and what is that? That's the extent to which the contributions made by the individual match the inducements offered by the organization. Now, essentially what this means is that you have the right qualifications for the job. And I believe I've mentioned earlier that the person job fit means that you have those hard skills that the organization is looking for. For instance, the company may require you to type 40 words a minute. They may require a bachelor's degree. They may require that you are proficient in some type of engineering protocol or whatever. This is the person job fit when you match those characteristics. Now, when it comes to individual differences, these are the personal attributes that vary from one person to another. Now, when you bring a person in, oftentimes all we look at are the characteristics of the job. Can you type? Can you do whatever is required based on the job description? But oftentimes we overlook the person's personality and the person's demeanor and the person's ability to get along with the culture. Now that's what we call the person organization fit. And we'll take a look at that a little bit later, but it's enough to know that the person has to be qualified in the characteristics of the job to be able to perform the job and it needs to match uh, what the organization is offering. And then the individual differences, well, it's just the personal attributes that vary from one to another. And that's pretty well uh, just straightforward. Now there's other types of fits, the person group, and uh, that's as, as this title implies, the extent to which an individual fits within the work groups and supervisors work styles, skills and goals. Uh, the person organization, that's what we talked about. Uh, do they have the same values, personalities, norms that the organization uh, uh, looks for? And I remember one time I was going to an organization looking to work there, and they were uh, impressed. They wanted me to come and work for them, and we finished up pretty much the interview and everything, and then I asked them, what's the culture like here? And the guy kind of stopped and it kind of shocked him, but he said, it's cutthroat here. We are very aggressive. We are very individualistic. There's very little teamwork. It's dog eat dog here. Well, needless to say, I didn't go back to that company. I wanted no more to do with them. So it's not just a matter of having the technical skills, the hard skills, the job skills. Uh, you need to have the demeanor and the personality and the type of uh, uh, personal fit that the organization is looking for. Person vocation, the fit between a person's interest, abilities, values, and personality, and the profession. So the person can be mis mix matched. Uh, you may have uh, the ability to do something, but not the interest. So one of our jobs in HR and in organizational behavior is to be able to inventory that person. And there are a lot of inventories out there that do this. Try to inventory a person's interests to find out where they fit based on interest and values and personality and so forth uh, with that profession. Now, What's a realistic job preview? Well, it's letting the person know up front what the job is all about. You present both positive and potentially negative information to the job candidates. And your goal is not to deter candidates, but to do the following. Provide accurate information about the job and the organization. Build trust and reduce turnover, especially from employees who quit because the job wasn't what they expected. I had a student one time who worked for Federal Express and she was in the recruiting department. And she specifically worked in the uh, area of recruiting people for the hub, which is that big 
gigantic warehouse where I guess all of the packages come to and you have to sort them out and put them on different uh, destination routes and so forth. It's a very manual labor intensive job, a very dangerous job in some of those areas and it demands a lot of the person. And this student told me that it's like a revolving door. She said oftentimes they will come in for the beginning of the shift, but they will quit before the shift is over with. So she said we're constantly taking in and losing people on a continual basis. But because they're FedEx and they have that big a company, they can afford to do that, at least for the time being. Most of us can't afford to do that. We can't afford to lose people once we have gone through the expense of hiring them and uh, training them and developing them, all for them to leave us because they're not satisfied or they didn't know what the job entailed. And more often than not, whenever I talk to students who are working in the professional world, I'll ask them, how happy are you with your job? And most of them will say, we're not. And I would ask why, and they said, well, we didn't know the job would be like this or the company was going to be like that. Now, in staffing, you have what's called the sales approach to recruiting. That means that recruiter or that HR professional will sell the company. They'll put their best foot forward and try to wine and dine you and, and uh, make you feel and think that that's the best place in the world to work until you sign the paperwork and you are there starting on the first day. You find out that it's totally different. So I had that experience one time. I answered a one ad for manager trainee. This is when I first started out in business. And that's all that one ad said, just manager trainee. So I went to the place where they said to come to. And I walked in and I got a big pep talk by the owner, I guess. And the owner said, I'm going to match you up with a professional who has been in this business and you're going to go out and start training. So I thought they were taking me to a uh, a facility where I would start training in a factory or a plant or something like that. But I got in the car and we went to Blytheville, Arkansas. And then we stopped in front of a little shopping center. And I'm going, where in the world are we? He said, well, we're here. We're going to start training. So I said, okay, well, maybe I'm going to be in the retail industry. So we got out and he went to the back of his car, opened up the trunk, pulled out a box, and the box was filled with counterfeit or knockoff perfume and cologne. And he told me to follow him, and I did, and we walked into a beauty shop, and he tried to start selling the women there, the customers and the employees, some of this knockoff, counterfeit, cheap uh, perfume. And we got thrown out of the place. I was stuck in Blyville all day long with this guy who told me that I was going to be a manager. So they did their best to draw me in. But uh, when I found out what the job was really about, I never went back. So this happens all the time in business. Companies trying to put their best foot forward to entice you and get you to uh, come in. And once they feel a lot of times if you're in, you'll stay. But that's more often than not, not the case. Now, personality is the relatively stable set of psychological attributes that distinguish one person from another. Now, we discussed attitudes in the past, and attitudes are things that you can change. Uh, with education, uh, getting to know the whole story, your attitude may change. Experience can change your attitude. Personality is relatively enduring. That means you're pretty much stuck with the personality that you have. Now, researchers have looked into this idea and concept of uh, personality. And what they have come up with is what we call the Big Five Personality Traits. And these are a set of fundamental traits that are especially relevant to organizations. And what are they? Well, first of all, we see agreeableness. This is the extent to which you get along with others. You may be in a workplace and some people are just very difficult to get along with. The level of agreeableness is the indicator that the person gets along or can't get along with others in the workplace. 
And when you are an organization that requires teamwork and collaboration, that can really hurt you. Conscientiousness, and that's the ability to be counted on to get things done. Are you considerate of time? Are you considerate of other people? Are you the type to do the job because you know that's what's expected of you? Or do you count on other people to do the job for you? Is there guilt when others have to carry your weight and so forth? So that's conscientiousness. Neuroticism. Neuroticism is experience anger, anxiety, moodiness, insecurity, some of those negative what we call affect or emotions. And for people who can't handle pressure well, they may have a certain degree of neuroticism. Extroversion. Extroversion is the degree to which you're outgoing and you're comfortable with relationships. Now, I'm outgoing in ministry. I'm a pastor, so I have to be able to speak to people. Uh, I have to be able to get in front of people and do public speaking. Uh, I have to, as a professor, be able to communicate curriculum to you and talk to you, but in private, I'm pretty much reserved. I don't like to talk a whole lot because I do it so much at work. But extroversion is the level of comfort you have with relationships by being outgoing. Are you the type of person who's never met a stranger? You can go to a party and not know a person there and feel comfortable just mingling and talking. Me, I'm going to sit in a corner uh, on a couch and keep to myself unless someone talks to me. So extroversion is the amount of comfort that you have with other people. And then openness. And openness is the capacity to entertain new ideas and to change as a result of new information. And this is what's essential today in business, especially in highly competitive markets where you have to have the newest thing out there, uh, the quickest and the most cost effective. Now, figure three one just shows you a pictorial of these uh, dimensions. So I'll let you guys take a look at that and we'll move on then to another um, form of assessment when it comes to personalities. Now the Myers-Briggs framework, the Myers-Briggs is a inventory, it's a questionnaire that classifies people just like the big five personality traits uh, the Myers-Briggs is an instrument that helps to identify different people and how they differ uh, across different dimensions. And these are extroversion, introversion. And this is the degree, as we said a while ago, how outgoing you are or how reserved you are. Sensing and intuition. Thinking and feeling. Judging and perceiving. Now, there are 16 personality classifications, and they result from the higher and lower positions of the general dimensions. So from that big four that you see here, you can come up with around 16 different personality classifications and so forth. Now, the Myers-Briggs is a popular questionnaire used to assess personality types. Many jobs today will have you take one, especially when you're looking at sales jobs and when you're looking at jobs that require interpersonal skills and so forth. So the Myers-Briggs is an important tool to use that's still used today. And it helps with communication styles and interaction preferences and so forth. So these assessments are very important and they can help you to gauge the person organization match. Now, when it comes to the person job match, you know, their resume and their qualifications will speak for themselves. But when it comes to the person organization match, do they have the right demeanor, personality? Uh, are they the same uh, with the organization when it comes to values and so forth? These are the things that these personality tests can help you to assess.